the root of every crisis that a believer has is identity crisis the root of every crisis a man in christ can ever have is identity crisis once you are able to deal with identification the light and the truth of who he is is unveiled welcome to the moment of revelational teaching with prophet dr kristen e samuel bringing to you the revelation of christ stay tuned so today we are continuing the series i started titled taking your place in christ someone say with me taking your place in christ louder say taking your place in christ hallelujah this is going to be part three <laughs> Are you ready for the word the intention of god for the believer is to equip the believer to function in his right position in christ god's intention for the born again man is to equip the born again man in such a way that he can take his right position in christ because there is a place bring it down a little bit there is a place that has been given to the man in christ the day you got born again you were taken to a place someone didn't hear me when you got saved you were taken from a place to another place and that place you function is a place of authority is a place of audacity is a place where you sit together with christ in rulership and in leadership and so this is the realm this is the place the believer functions in and so many believers go about in life and in destiny as though they don't have authority so you meet a believer in town and ask him how are you doing he says oh all hell has broken loose i'm going through a bad time i'm going through difficult times i'm confused i don't know what to do why should a believer talk like that the believer is talking like that because he doesn't know his place and once you don't know your place you are displaced and the devil can use you like a ping pong he just plays you around anyhow he likes but that's not god's intention for your life because the bible says be fruitful multiply subdue the earth and dominate so god's intention for every believer is to subdue is to dominate is to replenish the earth ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory so he calls him the father of glory the pata is the greek word the pata of glory that means the source of glory so if he is the father of glory who are the glory the glory is the man in christ uh, i wish i was communicating he calls him the father of glory that means he gives birth to glory mm. the god of our lord jesus christ not the god of abraham isaac and jacob uh, the name of god changed in the new testament uh, yeah, but, uh, la, but, uh. <laughs> the name of god changed in the new testament so in the new covenant he's called the god of our lord jesus christ i don't know the god of abraham i was not there i don't know the god of elijah i was not there somebody was praying one time and say lord let the god of elijah answer by fire and destroy all of my enemies i say you're a devil because it wasn't god who answered elijah by that fire it wasn't god god is not a killer god only gives life so the one who answered elijah by fire wasn't god because even those magicians could also call down fire like elijah did but elijah held up the fire it means the prophets of baal could also call down fire but elijah used his authority in the cosmic realm to hold the fire so all day all night they were praying to their angel that false angel 
but that false angel did not release fire for them but when the evening sacrifice came elijah called down fire and fire answered it wasn't god who answered by fire it was angels that answered by fire it was angels because one time jesus and his disciples were going into a village and they threw stones at them then james and john said lord let us call down fire from heaven like elijah did you don't need to do it we know how to do it like elijah we can do it like elijah we've mastered the art of calling down fire from heaven do you know that there are actual music magicians in africa that can call down rain yeah. it can be so sunny and all of a sudden wind and thunderstorms will just arrive and rain heavy rainfall will pour down they know how to do it is it god let us call down fire like elijah did and jesus said no you do not know what spirit you are of for the son of man has not come to destroy men's life but to save them so the god that answers by fire is not the god of our lord jesus christ yeah. <laughs> was an angel that answered elijah by fire so don't go about town asking fire to destroy your enemies because no fire from god will destroy any enemy rather the fire from god refines and transforms cloven tongues of fire came upon 120 illiterates and turned them into world changers so the fire of god only transform a life and turns men's life into lives of transformation that's what the fire of god does are you still here so the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory the father of glory so he lets you know who you are your name is glory if god is my father and he is the god of our lord jesus christ and he is the father of glory and i call him abba then who is the glory that means i am the glory shut up i am the glory of god so when i wake up in the morning i say the glory of god has woken up <laughs> zoketa when i look at myself in the mirror i say look at how wonderful and beautiful and fearfully made i am the expression of god's glory on the earth so the glory of god is not sun moon and stars forget about the elements the glory of god is some folks seated in superior lane Bowie, maryland this is the glory of god seated right here somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. the glory of god oh oh the glory is here the glory is god no the when we walk through the door the glory of god walked into this room yeah sakota bahaya so how can i live a defeated life when i am the glory of god Kabaha. that word glory is the greek word doxa d-o-x-a doxa and doxa means wealth the weight the wealth of god huh. the wealth of god the weight is weighty it's weighty have you ever held a bag of coin it's heavy it's weighty so a believer does not need to confess i'm broke where do you get that from i'm broke you cannot be broke because right inside of you is the wealth the riches of his glory right inside of you i'm the wealth of god i'm the wealth god is not rich in dollar god is rich in glory and if i'm the glory of god i know how to get the dollar someone didn't hear me uh, if i'm the glory of god i know how to get the dollar yeah because i'm the glory of god the father of glory he lets you know who you are you are his children and you are glory so he's the source the father of glory 
may give unto you may give unto you the wisdom of the spirit the wisdom of the spirit and revelation in the knowledge of him may give unto you the wisdom of the spirit that is the same wisdom that is in the that's in the holy ghost right now paul is praying that that wisdom be deposited inside of you the sophia that word wisdom is sophia the world of the intelligence of that divine being may give unto you that intelligence i'm not a dummy i'm not a dummy so the believer knows what to do when to do how to do where to do we're not confused we're not confused may give to you the wisdom of the spirit if you have the wisdom of the spirit what is the wisdom in your career you know how to navigate through life because i have the wisdom of the spirit and the wisdom of the spirit is revelation apocalypsis in the epignosis of him revelation means apocalypsis knowledge means epignosis apocalypsis revelation means the unveiling of the accurate inspiration in christ the unveiling of the accurate knowledge precise knowledge that only exists in christ jesus next verse next verse that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened the eyes of your understanding so it's very important that your eyes be open the eyes of your understanding be enlightened watch this that you may know what is the hope of his calling that you may know what is the hope the lps of his calling when he called you into christ there is hope so he wants you to know that hope in that calling that you may know the hope of his calling the confident expectation of that calling in christ jesus that means when he called you he had an expectation in that calling when God looked at Abraham in the awe of the childers and said to Abraham get thee out of your father's lands unto a land I will show you there was hope in that calling when God called Abraham Abraham stepped out in hope and the hope of that calling is inheritance the hope of that calling is inheritance and what is the riches of the glory the riches of the glory watch this of his inheritance the riches of the glory of his inheritance and where is that inheritance in the saints <laughs> so stop looking for inheritance outside the inheritance is in the saints all of god's inheritance is in you so you don't pray for god's inheritance you don't fast for god's inheritance you don't do 40 days of prayer and fasting for for the inheritance he says the inheritance is in you the inheritance is in the saints so all you need to do is bring that inheritance out bring that inheritance out by accurate knowledge so it's knowledge that helps you to bring out what has been deposited inside of you it's called knowledge it's called revelation it's inside of you somebody says inside of me louder says inside of me Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 let me show you something you blessed shout I'm blessed Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you the communication of your faith may become effectual that means something that works all the time the communication of your faith that word communication means the greek word koinonia which means the participation of your faith that means your faith 
ought to participate with the faith of God the participation of your faith so in Christianity there is a responsibility you have a responsibility in the faith you participate in the faith you fellowship in the faith so the participation of your faith becomes effective effectual by the acknowledging gnosko epignosis acknowledging of every good thing which is in you so the good thing is not in the sky the good thing is in you the good thing is not with the government the good thing is in you acknowledging of every good thing which is in you and you are in christ so the good thing is not in christ so the believer does not pray lord give me something lord give me something that's not the prayer of the believer because if you're asking jesus bless me lord bless me lord bless me lord then jesus is like but i put all the blessings inside of you i put all the good things in you so how do you want me to dig it out of you you dig it out of yourself because it's in you already it's right inside of you so how do you get that thing which is in you out by acknowledging it didn't say by praying <laughs> is prayer good yes but many christians pray without knowledge and that's why they pray amiss they are always praying they are always full of words praying praying and when it doesn't work they begin to question god lord uh, lord where are you i'm not coming to church again okay if you don't come to church what are you doing you're doing yourself you still go to hell what's your problem <laughs> you, you go to hell <laughs> are you doing someone a favor <laughs> lord I'm not, I'm not coming to church again <laughs> that's fine because many people have failed to come to a place of knowledge they want a quick fix they don't want the word it's the word of god that transforms a life not your mumblings oh father oh father you can say father from now to tomorrow nothing will change because god only respects his word he doesn't respect your speech or your tears your tears does not move him what moves him is the integrity of his word not your speech that's why when J Jesus' disciples came to Jesus and said Lord teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples how to pray John taught his disciples how to pray for things Jesus taught his disciples how to pray about the kingdom <laughs> are you catching that he said pray this our father which is in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and the will of god is the salvation of all men so jesus's prayer teaches the believer how to pray a prayer that captures the souls and the heart of men not gimme 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 because my name is jimmy and yet they pray give me 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 and they really don't get and it's elon Musk that is getting all the money it's bill gates that's still getting all the money <laughs> jeff bezo is still getting all the money because christians just think that by praying lava or lava elaba elaba shabaya elaba they think that money will just rain down from heaven acknowledging of every good thing which is in you and that good thing is in you and you are in Christ somebody say I am in Christ louder say I am in Christ so the problem with the believer is not a power problem the believer does not have a power problem the believer is a dangerous being the believer is a powerhouse but the believer is just walking about town thinking he's nothing on the earth but right inside of him is all of the power of god ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 let me show you that power ephesians 1 verse 18 the believer does not look for power he has the power he has come to all of god's power look at verse 19 
Kabaladis. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? So where is that power? It's towards us who believe. So Paul says, what is the exceeding greatness of that power? And that power is generated to the one who believes. So the power is towards the one who believes. The day you believed in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus, that power was transported inside of you. And Paul calls it the great exceeding greatness of his power. Hooper balloon, megatos. Power that goes beyond targets. That means when God was to throw that power in you, the power landed in you and exploded around your environment. <laughs> That's the word Paul used there. Exceeding greatness. Hooper balloon megatos. It means to throw beyond target. When he threw that power on you, the power exploded on you and went around you and rearranged things in your environment that means that power can turn around anything in your life if only you come to the accurate knowledge of that power it's in you so the believer does not have a power problem the problem of the believer is the understanding of his placement is the understanding of his placements once he knows where he has been positioned he functions in that authority towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power so the power is towards you and that power is constantly working according to the working of his mighty power that power is mighty and is continually working it's working the power is working in me it's working in me it was working in me i got the power of god whether you are aware or you're not aware it's working in you it's working <laughs> it's just generating like the power that is generating or that is powering this this room right now is working somewhere from a transformer non-stop is working if you turn off the lights in this place it doesn't mean that the power in this room is not working it's working it's working but all you need to do is come to a place of knowledge of that which is working already inside of you so you just turn on the lights turn on the lights the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the darkness cannot stand the light and that light is knowledge that light is knowledge knowledge is that light just turn on the light once you turn on the light most of your prayer points will change there are certain things you will not be praying for anymore once you come to knowledge there are certain things you don't pray for anymore you just walk in authority and when you have a need you know how to call for that need into existence you just know how to do it in the name of jesus i settle this case now and then you just go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning it's already settled because you understand your placement you understand your place you understand your authority somebody shout hallelujah are you blessed shout i'm blessed matthew chapter 16 verse 16 i want to still show you your place and your authority your place and your authority and what you can do with that placement and authority and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ the son of the living god next verse and jesus said unto him blessed art thou simon bar jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee but my father which is in heaven next verse I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell the gates of hell shall not prevail against it the gates of hell shall not prevail against it let's look at the next verse 
watch this and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven so the one who has the keys of the kingdom of heaven now is not god <laughs> i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven so if i have given you the key who is with the key if i give you the key who is now with the key god or you <laughs> religion does not like this how can you say i have the key of heaven i think god is the one that opens the door and closes the door no no i'm the one that opens the door i'm the one that can close the door <laughs> yes have you not seen people come to me man of god please pray for a breakthrough pray for an open door and i speak a word and the door open who opened the door i did what the, and the person was praying to god all along father open my door nothing opened but when he met, met me that door i command that door be open the door opened who opened the door so the believer has the authority has the power to open every door that's why he says the gates of hell shall not prevail that means you can yank off the gates of hell <laughs> nothing can stand before you nothing can stand before your success i can hear an amen in this house nothing absolutely nothing i will give to you the keys somebody say i got the keys <laughs> even a secular artist saying i got the keys 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 i got the keys even secular people know they have keys believers are walking like that i'm a nobody i am a nobody i'm a nobody jay-z jay-z knows he has the keys <laughs> jay-z and dj khaled <laughs> <laughs> they know they have the key <laughs> but believers why are you acting like you don't know what you have got the keys of the kingdom of heaven the keys that word kingdom is the word basilia basilia and basilia means the rule or the reign the rule or the reign the domain of heaven the royal palace huh. that's what kingdom means the domain of a king kingdom the domain of a king kingdom so you have the keys of the domain of the king of heaven aha uh -huh, someone didn't hear that you have the keys of the domain of the king of heaven uh, that means he depends on you to rule and reign in his domain <laughs> that means he can rule or reign without you so he rules and reigns together with you because you have the key ha, I got the keys and watch this and whatsoever thou shall bind it's not whatsoever God shall bind God will not do the binding you will do the binding because you have the keys whatsoever you shall bind yeah whatsoever i can bind because i have the key i got the authority that's why i can bind whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven so earth controls heaven earth controls heaven heaven does not control earth shatoga huh. batalaya Logo to barakasata, mendokosa. 
that a man can be walking on the face of the earth and determines the adventure in heaven a man can walk on the face of the earth and determine the happenings in heaven that's authority that's authority whatsoever you bind on earth if you are not bound it will keep molesting you bind that word bind is the greek word deho d-e-h-o deho and deho means to disallow deho means to disallow so whatsoever you disallow on earth is disallowed in heaven so you don't go about saying i'm sick you allowed sickness you allowed the sickness because you don't have the knowledge of the key you have because he that breaketh the edge the serpent will bite you open the door for the sickness to come in if you had shut the door and closed the door and locked the door the sickness will not come in so who allowed the sickness you did god did not allow the sickness because god never afflicts any man with sickness god does not use the tool of satan to afflict his people someone says oh maybe god is trying to teach me a lesson with this sickness maybe god is trying to humble me i've been very bad all these years maybe god is allowing me to go through god god allowing you who taught you that nonsense god allowing you with sickness god god has nothing else to do god is so jobless so jobless that he has to look for bacteria somewhere <laughs> just put his hand in dirt in in dirt yeah. where is that virus uh -huh. angel michael give me give me water let me wash my hands god is that jobless <laughs> yes i've afflicted her yes i've afflicted her with the sickness uh -huh. i need to teach that one a lesson cancer cancer uh-huh michael bring the cancer cell yeah let me walk in uh -huh. god god is not wicked somebody say god is not wicked louder say god is not wicked so god does not allow these things you allowed it because whatsoever you allow whatsoever you bind so bind means to disallow so whatever you disallow on earth will be disallowed in heaven you can disallow lack you can disallow poverty whatsoever you disallow you disallow demonic activities in your life you disallow it no go area no go area for witchcraft activities here in the name of jesus I went to Africa and a brother came to me and said, Man of God, uh, de demons keep pressing me in the night. Demons keep pressing me in the night. And I said to him, do, be do you believe in Jesus? He said, Yes, I've been born again for 20 years. And demons keep pressing me in the night. I look at my body. They keep coming, scratching my body. Look at my, you're showing me marks all over his body. But he said, But I pray every night. I pray every night. I said, So you pray every night and the demons still come and scratch your body. I said one night the demon scratched his body he could not stand up he was paralyzed and he said i covered the whole house with the blood of jesus and they still came to press me <laughs> i said you see this is why we keep teaching knowledge because you can say blood of jesus it doesn't work it's not you calling blood of jesus that works is the knowledge of what that man Jesus has done on your behalf that works you can scream Jesus from now to tomorrow and the demon will say to you Jesus we know you think we are scared of Jesus no we are not scared of the name we even know him <laughs> we know him he's the one who even created us don't you understand <laughs> he created us so do you think I'll be scared but what demons are afraid is your authority in him it's your authority so you allow the demonic affliction you allowed it 
whatsoever you bind shall be bound and whatsoever you lose that word lose means to dissolve to put off or to destroy lose means to dissolve to put off or to destroy so whatever you destroy you destroy on earth you put off on earth shall be put off in heaven it's not heaven puts it off and it's put off on earth you put it off on earth and then it's put off in heaven somebody say i got the keys louder say i got the keys i can't hear you say i have the keys so the man in christ has been giving the keys the keys of the dominion and rulership of heaven somebody say i have the keys louder say i have the keys hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 as i begin to round up are you blessed louder shout i'm blessed let me show you your placement in christ and why we are positioned in christ why are we positioned in christ why are we positioned in christ hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 let's read from verse 7 so we can understand the context and i want to show you what happened to jesus when he rose from the dead and ascended to the heavens this is what happened in heaven when jesus ascended to heaven and of the angels he said who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire so the angels are the fire you see there all right next verse <laughs> but unto the son he said thy throne O god is forever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom thy throne O god thy throne O god is forever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom unto the son he said this is god talking to jesus and this is god talking to jesus when jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven please pay attention when jesus arrived heaven on that day when he arrived heaven god looked at jesus and said thy throne O god so god called the son god uh, someone is not catching me <laughs> thy throne O god so god is looking at man and calling man god <laughs> when jesus ascended to heaven remember paul gave us a narration and said that god has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord Jesus is sovereign Jesus is God Jesus is the one who rules over the earth so this is what happened on that coronation service when Jesus arrived in heaven with all the saints of the Old Testament God single-handedly picked out Jesus from the crowd and said to him son come forth and the son stood up from the congregation of the saints and walked towards the throne and God said to him sit <laughs> sit my Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy fruits too. So God said to the son, sit. And when the son sat, God began to speak to the son. Unto the son he said, thy throne, O God. <laughs> so God is calling a man God. And God is calling a man his God. Thy throne, O God, unto the son so god is calling the son god so if god calls anybody god that means that god is his god <laughs> if god calls anybody god that means that person he calls god is his god so god said to jesus thy throne O god <laughs> is forever and ever nobody is taking the seat from you 
nobody is taking this position from you it's forever and ever and the believer in christ is seated with christ in the heavenly places so my throne is forever and ever no man can take your position somebody shout out here yeah, no man can take my position if jesus's throne is forever and ever and i'm seated with christ so where is my throne my throne is forever and ever is forever and ever so the believer cannot be unseated from this place demons can come there and take you out of that place it's forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom so he coronated jesus next verse so look at god calling the son god thou hast loved righteousness thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore god even thy god has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows so now god now calls himself the god of jesus he called jesus god then he now goes ahead to say i am even your god <laughs> this is the, what the greek calls subcatizo you can't find one without the other where you find one you find the other subcatizo so he now says to jesus i am your god and now also says to jesus you are my god so god looks at jesus and says jesus you are my god and then jesus looks at god and says to god you are my god <laughs> so god worships jesus and jesus worships god ah <laughs> you know a religious mind cannot handle this but it's right there unto the son he said thy throne O god O god so god called the son god even thy god has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your fellows that word fellows means brethren that means when jesus went to heaven with all the saints of the old testament god single-handedly picked christ out and coronated jesus so moses must have been there looking at jesus and be like wow this little boy that came after me so he is god elijah must have looked and said wow so jesus is god ezekiel and daniel must have looked and said so he is god and said sit at my right hand until i make thy enemies thy footstool god anointed him with the oil of gladness so the only one that god anointed is jesus no other person is anointed of god let that sink write that down in capital letters <laughs> you know how some men of god go about in town and say i am anointed of god you lie you are a liar where did you see god where anointed of god that is god walked into your bedroom no it was some big belly bishops with white collar that poured granite oil coconut oil on your head it wasn't god some pot belly bishops poured cooking oil on your head and now you go about with cooking oil on your head that if we submit your head to a fry pan you will be a fried chicken so that now puffs them up with pot belly it now puffs them up cooking oil on their head now puffs them up do you know who i am touch not my anointed no you are anointed in your pot belly my friend God anointed thee. So who did God anoint? Jesus. David said in his 23rd Psalm, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Question, did God anoint David or it was man who anointed David? Who anointed David? God or man? 
man and who was that man samuel samuel took some cooking oil cooking oil you can actually use it to fry chicken there's nothing special about that oil but in heaven in heaven god used an oil called the oil of gladness this oil is not made with hands it's called the spirits it's not made with hands it's called the spirit because olive oil is not in heaven in the sky you know heaven is far beyond the sky is there olive tree in heaven is there a soil in heaven where they plant <laughs> plant stuff and then the brain start squeezing the thing out no the oil is in god so god poured that oil from himself onto the sun it's called the oil of gladness which is called the spirit so god anointed jesus so jesus is the only anointed of god so a believer is not anointed but a believer has the anointing it means two different things the believer is not anointed the believer has the anointing you are not anointed but you are a carrier of the anointing which makes it even better because the oil that flows from the head goes down to the beards even down to the skirt of Aaron so you are the one that the oil overflows on because the oil on the head which is Christ rubs off on the body so Christ is anointed you house the anointing so christ in you the hope of glory so you have the anointed one in you that means you have the anointing in you yeah so no bishop somewhere will just harass you and say touch not my anointed no but you can touch us but we can't touch you what are you saying sir what are you saying we can touch you the government has touched you many times and you are the one even touching people and we are seeing you on cnn <laughs> touching people carelessly and we see you locked up in jail and you're telling me not to say what are you saying sir <laughs> the anointed is jesus but the believer is a carrier of the anointing I house the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That means I can do anything by the anointing of the Spirit. Don't let anybody brag, I'm anointed of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. No, some bishops somewhere, man, just poured oil on their head and just stained their face that day. And they just went back with their old lives. Nothing changed. The word, they don't know. They are zero. They don't know anything. <laughs> religion religion is very wicked it's very wicked and it makes it puffs people off that are nothing before god nothing it puffs them up and they are nothing before god they want to take the position of christ because once you say i'm anointed of god because the word anointed is the greek word christ anointed is the greek word christ so when you say i'm anointed of god what you're actually saying is i am christ and people don't understand the implication of the words they say so which christ are we following the one in heaven or you <laughs> anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow somebody shout hallelujah next verse next verse next verse and thou lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens at the works of your hands so when god anointed jesus in that anointing of jesus is you buried in that anointing that means that anointing that came on jesus came right inside of you and so you can function and live and reign on the earth with that anointing rise on your feet wherever you are for more of our messages follow us on our social media platforms 
Facebook at Dr. Kristen E. Samuel. YouTube at Dr. Kristen E. Samuel. Kristen Samuel Ministries, bringing to you the revelation of Christ.